Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Good morning, I'm Trent McGee with your Talk of the Town news update in tribute to Patriot Day today, also known as the National Day of Service and Remembrance. Governor Cooper has ordered all U.S. and North Carolina flags at state facilities to be lowered to half staff from sunset, from sunrise to sunset today. Today honors the victims of the 9-11 tragedy, their families, and the heroic sacrifices of first responders. For the second time in weeks, bar owners across North Carolina rallied Thursday and protested outside the governor's mansion, demanding they be allowed to reopen. Zach Medford, organizer and president of the North Carolina Bar and Tap Association, says 1,063 private bars in the state are still closed. Bar owners said they hope the protests will urge Governor Cooper to reopen bars. Organizers say they have reached out to the governor and the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, but have not received a response. North Carolina Secretary of Health and Human Services Dr. Mandy Cohen has denied a request for colleges across North Carolina to allow families of football players to attend games in person. The request was made on Tuesday in a letter to DHHS by Appalachian State, UNC Charlotte, North Carolina, East Carolina, and Wake Forest. The letter asked for 350 family members from each school to be allowed to attend home games and included a chart breaking down the capacity of each school's football stadium and what percentage of the stadium's capacity 350 would be. A Fort Bragg paratrooper was killed in a training accident in Georgia, according to the 82nd Airborne Division. Officials say the paratrooper was assigned to Fort Bragg but was at Fort Stewart in Georgia for training at the time of the accident. No other details have been released. Police in Kinston are hoping to identify a man wanted for questioning in a case of peeping at a Walmart. A surveillance photo of the person of interest was released Thursday afternoon. Police say the electronic peeping happened last Thursday around 1240 in the afternoon at the Walmart on US 70. Captain Rodney Russell says it appears the peeper was trying to take photos of the skirts of women shoppers. And wildfires burning across the West have now killed 23 people and scorched 7,000 square miles. More than 100 large fires were reported in 13 western states Thursday. The fires have killed 19 people in California, three in Oregon, and one in Washington. Dozens more are missing in a series of wildfires in Northern California. With your Talk of the Town news update, I'm Trent McGee. Come on, come on. You'll see a uh, chance of rain for today. Scattered showers expected this afternoon. A 70% chance of rain. Just hold off long enough so we can get some golf in this morning, if you would, weather gods. Uh, your high today will be 86 degrees for your Saturday. For the first time in a few days, less rain uh, is uh, in sight. A 20% chance of showers under partly sunny skies for tomorrow with a high of 82 degrees. 85 degrees for the high on Sunday under partly cloudy skies with overnight lows for your Sunday night around 73. Next week looking really good. Fall temps on tap. Cooler temperatures with no rain in sight uh, pretty much the entire week next week. Right now your current temp in Greenville 75 degrees, 76 in New Bern. Talk of the Town is live on location this morning at Great Harvest Bread Company in Greenville. Stop by and see us a lot to get to on this Friday. TOT 103.7 WTIB and Talk 96.3. Okay, welcome in, everybody. We are live on location this morning at Great Harvest Bread Company. Welcome to Talk of the Town on uh, 103.7 and 96.3. And welcome to the weekend, uh, Henry Hinton and Trent McGee. And we have a friend here in the middle. We need to name this guy. What are we going to name this guy? Mitch. Mitch? Why Mitch? I don't know. Just hit me. Mitch the Bear is here. With it to, this is our annual teddy bear donation program we are hoping that you will bring us teddy bears this morning that are going to be used by law enforcement we do this once a year where we uh, we actually collect teddy bears when we're here at great harvest bread company one day a year and these teddy bears are given to law enforcement that use them to uh, to, to help with children uh, in domestic violence situations a lot of times these law enforcement officers have to go into tough situations, and uh, they're dealing with children who are frightened and uh, in some cases have been abused, and they, uh, they use teddy bears. They, they keep them in their cars, and they, they use these teddy bears 
to uh, calm these, uh, these kids. And so we have the first teddy bear donation this morning. I actually went out and bought this one last night at Target. I lied yesterday. I said you could get teddy bears at Walgreens, but the, teddy green, the, the, the Walgreens on Greenville Boulevard didn't have any teddy bears. I got to do it. <laughs> so uh, we were not able to get a teddy so, so I went to Target. And this is the only one they had at Target. Like Target yeah. So I got, I got uh, Mitch, the teddy bear. And we've got, uh, uh, so bring us teddy bears this morning. We've got a busy, big show this morning, as always, when we're on location. I do want to mention a couple of things. There is a, uh, a, a heavy fog advisory throughout our listening area this morning. If you are traveling this morning, uh, you need to know that areas of dense fog have developed overnight, some locations dropping to uh, less than a quarter of a mile. Uh, motorists this morning can expect rapidly changing visibilities, especially in low-lying areas near swamps and streams and bridges. Extra caution this morning, folks, when you're traveling because um, you need to have your low beam headlights on, reduce your speed, and increase your stopping distance. And of course, as we join you here this morning, we're going to have a lot of different guests talking about a, different, a lot of different things, but let none of us forget that today, 19 years ago, today is 9-11, and at 8.46 this morning, I'm going to pause because at 8.46 this morning, 19 years ago, is when the first airplane hit the tower in New York. God bless all those people and their families. And uh, let us never forget. Let us never forget. I hope everyone pauses at 846 yeah. and remembers so at the lives lost. We're going to do that. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention. Um, some of the ECU trustees may stop by this morning. I got a text last night. <clears throat> they were having dinner last night saying, where are you, where are you going to be tomorrow? And I said, Great Harvest. So I think some of the trustees may stop by this morning. Uh, Patrick Johnson had a great interview with Vern Davenport, the chair of the uh, Board really of uh, Trustees yesterday. Yep. And it was pretty comprehensive. Vern <clears throat> covered a lot of different areas, including the uh, chancellor search, the football season, and this incredibly insane decision by Governor Roy Cooper that he announced yesterday that no parent can be in the stands for the football games at Carolina tomorrow, Wake Forest, Duke games tomorrow. We have the uh, – have the Carolina games it, on 94-1, have the Carolina-Syracuse game on 94-1 and uh, 97-9, and we have the Duke game on 103-7. But, of course, I talked to John Gilbert yesterday, the athletic director at ECU. John and other athletic directors sent a letter to the governor explaining that they would have the parents spread out in a 50,000-seat stadium. We're talking about 250 to 300 people, just close family members of the players. That was the only request. In these 50 to 60,000 seat football stadiums. And Cooper said no to that. What? And I mean, it just, it has to, if you thought it wasn't political, please go back with me to March when he said what we were doing was flattening the curve. And now he's so drunk with power, he won't allow families to go watch their kids play football. I, th there's just absolutely no rationale, no science, no data. It's nothing but politics, and I have to believe it's retaliation in, in many ways for the fact that he and Mandy Cohen did not want the colleges to play, well, she but they don't have control over them. So they, co they control what they can, which is, okay, if you're going to play, we're not having anybody in the stands, including families. This guy's out of control. Uh, yeah, you, you made a good point via Twitter yesterday in saying that. And it seems like to me it's more of a Cohen decision than it is a Cooper decision. I mean, yesterday really proved to me that she's the one calling the shots. I mean, she's making these decisions. And, I mean, she, she, she came right out and said it yesterday. We should not be, we should not be playing football. So, there you go. You, they, they don't understand. I mean, and she especially doesn't understand – what what life in North Carolina is like and what it's supposed to be about. And, you know, these these crazy uh, ideas that, you know, that, that again, you go back. If, let's say that some, if there is a breakout on a college football team, not one college kid has been hospitalized. They, 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 most of them are asymptomatic when they get it. I mean, there's just no rationale for that. I mean, Greg Murphy made a good point. We have 25, 26 kids in college die of meningitis every year, and no one ever talks about shutting colleges down. 
So th- this is absolutely beyond, beyond the pale, what Cooper has done here. Uh, again, he's o- just like Democrats always do, he's overplaying his hand. And I can only hope that you independent voters will make him pay for this in November. And this, this decision will remain in place, I believe, through the end of September. And the, they'll evaluate that right. again and then go back and look at it for – for October it's, it's, and November. It's very frustrating, very frustrating. I do want to make one more, uh, well, two more points. Uh, while we're on that, WITN had a headline on their website yesterday about big breakouts at fraternities and sororities. And there were people on, uh, from, uh, there were some, some people who are involved in administration of these fraternities and sororities last night on Facebook saying it's not true. So, you know, again, I think every get the facts right, you know. They're, they're, they were reporting numbers of sorority and fraternity members from the beginning of school in mid-August. Yeah, I didn't even mention that Calling them outbreaks when they were <laughs> saying there were 15 or 18 people in a fraternity house or a sorority house. Those were not people that were necessarily infected. Now those were the, back to the beginning. So, again, everybody's after clicks. If it bleeds, it reads. It leads. And, 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 you know, it's just frustrating to hear some of this stuff. One more point, and then we're going to get on with the festivities of the day. We've got a lot of folks waiting to get on here at Great Harvest Bread. There was a um, – uh, I watched the city council meeting last night. It was painful to watch. They're doing it by Zoom. Those things are hard I was to watch. I was relying on you. I admit I was watching the football game. <laughs> See how bored I was last night? <laughs> I told my wife, I'm like, man, I must be nuts. I must be nuts. I'm watching the Greenville City Council meeting. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, May, uh, Mayor Connolly, if you're listening, you did a fabulous job, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> he's going to be here today. He's going to be here this yeah. morning making some of the teddy bear bread. And so we'll talk to Mayor Connolly about this. But the uh, I just wanted to say that um, we've if you followed the controversy over the Catholic high school here and the, athlete, the new athletic fields and the money that was donated to build the athletic fields by businessman Rich Ballot, $12 million dollars to build those beautiful athletic fields out on 14th Street at JP2 High School. And uh, the neighbors, of course, some of the neighbors were concerned about the noise levels for games at night and uh, the lights and the fact that, you know, the the high school has intended to rent out their athletic facilities to third parties to play football, basketball, uh, softball, baseball over there which is sorely needed for the youth programs in Greenville. And there were some neighbors who had legitimate concerns about that. Some, I think, were just following the lead of some of the others. But um, they, 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 it was expected to be a big fight last night at the city council meeting. And, um, and then the council would have to decide whether they were going to allow this amendment to the, uh, to the land use over there and uh, allow – JP2 to be able to lease it out and use the lights at night and the and the and the PA system and all that. Well, a beautiful thing happened. The uh, the, the neighbors got together with the administrators, uh, the principal, uh, and the uh, priest at JP2 and Rich Ballot, and they sat down this week and they worked out a compromise. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Beautiful thing. I mean, and uh, and and so. I just want to congratulate everybody involved in that, and it put the city council in a position where they didn't even have to take a vote last night. And I think it's what JP2 and the Neighborhood uh, Association people and others who had concerns wanted to do. So I was glad they were able to come together and work something out. But, you know, I have to make this point. And, and again, people will say I'm playing politics, but I have to make this point. There were people fanning the flames to make this a controversy, to make this a negative thing for the mayor and the city council. More anti-business BS coming from people who are still, yeah, people like, you know, let's face it. I mean, Calvin Mercer was the ringleader who ran against P.J. Conley and lost two two, uh, cycles ago. Uh, And Mercer has been sending emails. I've I've got them in my email inbox writing letters to the newspaper, trying to stir up controversy with the neighbors over there, get them to oppose this high school and, and this guy's unbelievable generosity, $12 million to build that facility. And Calvin has been in the background fanning the flames, trying to create controversy 
and 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 make this another anti city council issue saying that the you know the mayor and the city council was all about special interest uh, all about um, uh, you know in the pocket of developers and all that this issue had nothing to do with developers it had nothing to do with with special interest this was high school a, a, a Catholic high school at that building an athletic facility for children to use in our community. Yeah, I've and, never you know, understood and, and the again, special they, interest correlation. They got together and worked it out, which is the way that it should happen, without the city council having to get in and I make agree. a decision yeah. and say and make somebody unhappy. Uh, congratulations to uh, the athletic uh, uh, folks at the JP2, Rich Ballot. Congratulations to the principal and the priest over there and the neighbors that got together mm-hmm. and worked out a compromise so that everyone can move forward on this issue. And But, you know, um, shame on Calvin Mercer and others who tried to stimulate this into another Greenville community controversy. I hate this stuff when it happens. And name-calling of the city council people and those kind of things. It's just despicable, and that kind of stuff needs to stop. All right, 24 minutes after 7 o'clock. Uh, where's Greg? Can we get Greg in? He's over in the corner over there. Can you grab him? I can. Let's go. Somebody, okay, Clark, can you? Uh, okay, Trent's going to get him. Go get him, Trent. Uh, we're going to, and we want to get into all the festivities of the day. And again, if you're in the area and if you've got a uh, teddy bear, you can donate. We would love to have you come by, and uh, and be with us. And uh, we are going to be collecting teddy bears all morning. We have Mitch the teddy bear. Trent has named our teddy bear Mitch. I have no idea why. Hey, Mitch. <laughs> Greg Green, the uh, owner of uh, Great Harvest Bread, is here this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you Thank doing? you for having us back. It's always a pleasure. Love having you guys. Good crowd in here. Everybody's social distancing, wearing yep. masks. Yep. So if you want to come by, you can feel safe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and bring us a teddy bear this morning. Tell yep. us where the teddy bears go. So uh, today we're really, and the, through the end of the month, we're focusing on foster care here in Pitt County. So right now we have more than 200 kids in foster care. Um, and one of the challenges that we're facing is that with COVID, um, you know, we, I think we're going to end up seeing more kids in foster care. Uh, you know, that, that system just takes a while to, to end up coming into play. Uh, and so we really want to focus over the next number of months on those hidden areas of hurt within our community and rally support around it. So last year we did this Teddies for Foster program where we had social workers and nonprofit agencies that work in the area of foster care, uh, sheriff's office personnel who all came into the bakery and they made bread teddy bears. And a portion of those uh, teddy bear sales went to uh, Pitt County Foster Care uh, to help care for the needs uh, of these children that are being removed from their homes and facing traumatic situations. Uh, and with that, we also did a plush teddy bear drive. So over the next rest of the month, we're going. And this one's plush. This one's nice and plush and soft and yeah. co- cuddly. In fact, when uh, I was pull- when I was taking them to the uh, counter to pay for them at Target last night, I was thinking, man. This thing feels good. I might have to sleep with you it. You might tonight, have to snuggle with it. I yeah. Didn't. So, um, so you'll be able to drop off plush teddy bears all month long with us. Uh, you can start pre-ordering your your uh, bread bears with us now, and we will have those. Uh, the week of the twenty first uh, is when we're going to actually be making them, and like last year, we're going to have uh, folks who are engaged in the uh, foster care. Uh, field working on the kneading table with us making those bread teddy bears uh, and proceeds will go uh, so you're not making them this morning we're going to have a couple of you make them so we're going to pull you on the table at some point Uh, we've got uh, I want to make a teddy bear the the mayor's coming by he's going to make a teddy bear (laughs) Um, Sheriff Paul Dance is going to come by and make a teddy bear Uh, we've got members of Bridge Foster Care Ministry uh, uh, the Teddy Bear Foundation at ECU, DSS. So we'll have some folks making teddy bears today on the breadboard. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go all out. That's awesome. So come on by and be a part of it this morning. And, uh, and, and again, you can buy the teddy bears the week of September 21st. You can start pre-ordering them now. They will be ready the week of the, the 21st. Right. Um, and proceeds will go. And proceeds will go to uh, Bridge Foster Care Ministry and the, and the Department of Social Services, right. Pitt County Foster Care. Are we going to talk to some of these folks this morning? Yes, sir. All right, so hang on. We're going to get that done. 
before we uh, bring McGee back in and we do our pirate report, though, tell us what else is happening at Great Harvest this month. Uh, we have hit into the fall menu. So pumpkin spice cake, pecan pie bars, which goes towards Coop Strong, which is our nonprofit of the month. The, we have hit the season that everybody loves a Great Harvest because it's got those wonderful fall flavors of things, autumn apple bread. Um, th this is the stuff that dreams are made of. Autumn apple bread. I'm making a list here. What did you say? Pumpkin spice what? Pumpkin spice cake. And then we've got the pecan pie bar, which oh. if you haven't tried that, I'm going to bring some over for you to taste. It is pecan pie on the go. What was it the uh, the chancellor was all about when he was here the last Savannah week? Bar. Yeah, the Savannah Bar. And we I, always and, have the Savannah Bar. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, so I think some of the ECU trustees will be coming by this morning, so oh, we'll great. tell them to take the chancellor of Savannah Bar. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. They got a meeting this morning. Yeah. All right, thank you for having us. Great As to have always, you, we love being here. Yep. yep. And uh, you always do such great things for the community. And yep. uh it's good to be here this morning. Well, it's good to have you. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right. And we're gonna, are we going to meet some of the foster kids, by the way? Uh, Maybe. I, I don't know if we're going to have any foster care kids today. Okay. Um, we did we that last have, year, and yeah, I enjoyed talking to them. But we'll talk to the people involved in, in helping the foster yeah. care well, kids. We're going to have a number of folks here who um, are, are engaged in the foster yeah. care ministry areas within yeah. our community. Yeah. And then actually in... Uh, next Monday, we'll, we'll have someone here from Channel 12, um, and the reporter doing the thing, uh, doing the article, uh, came from a foster home. No kidding. So uh, our goal you know, really I, is I, to raise awareness here. I was here. talking about, I don't know if you saw the um, the little boy, I think it was up in Cincinnati, yep. that um, he and his brother had been in a foster uh, care um uh, and they want, and and they interviewed the little boy. The, the, his little brother had been taken in and adopted by a family, but okay. he hadn't been. Did you oh, see wow. that? I did not see that. And so it, it went viral. Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about millions of people, and I don't know how many offers that kid had yeah. after that video yeah. ran. Mm. But I'm sure he's with a family yeah. today. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I, I I lived with a foster family for a period of time, and I can tell did you, you really? that the impact it had on me no uh, was profound. Yeah. Um, so. Man, the more I learn about you, the more I, I admire you. Yeah, I, I, I was left on a doorstep when I was five in rural Illinois. No way. And I lived with two different foster families. Is that right? Um, and, you know, honestly, I guess that's I've, why you're in, into this program so yeah. deeply, huh? Well, I, I've spent a lifetime figuring out what it means to not feel abandoned. Yeah. Really? Know? And, and so it, it's kind of one of those things that is near and no dear kidding. to my heart. Um, yeah. Well, let me tell you, you're not abandoned in this community because you're... <laughs> We, we uh, embrace you, absolutely. and you're part of our family. Well, I love this community. <laughs> you, uh, you have really fallen into this community in a big way, you and your yep. wife, Kim. Uh, yep. And you've got a beautiful family. Thank so, you. Uh, thank God you. bless you, and thank yeah. you for all you do here at Great Harvest. Good to see absolutely. you, Greg. Absolutely. Thanks for you. having us. Uh -huh. All right, 731. McGee, you ready with the Pirate Report? Let's do the Pirate Report. I don't know who the sponsor is, but I'll tell you right after we do it, as we uh, transition here, McGee has our Pirate Report, and um, – and other sports, we got college football tomorrow in the state, mm -hmm. and uh, and I guess two weeks from tomorrow, Pirates, right? Yes. All right. Yes. Here's our Pirate report. Yeah, East Carolina will hold its final full scrimmage of the season today. The team will soon start testing players three times a week. We learned this on Thursday for the coronavirus per AAC guidelines. Any player who tests positive for the virus must sit out ten days and then pass return. To deemed a close contact due to contact Tracy must sit out at least fourteen days. In other sports, NFL season kicked off Thursday night with the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs beating the Texans 34-23 touchdown passes for Patrick Mahomes in the win. The Panthers host the Raiders on Sunday at 1 o'clock in a game you can hear right here on 103.7 WTIB. In college football tomorrow, number 19 North Carolina hosts Syracuse. Duke visits 10th ranked at Notre Dame. Wake Forest welcomes number one Clemson to Winston-Salem. And on the uh, links, Russell Knox shot a 963 to take the first round lead in the Safeway Open, the first event of the new PGA Tour season. Harold Varner III opened with a five under 67. All right, 732. Our Pirate Report this hour brought to you by Duplin Winery. They've got that uh, great Muscadine wine that you can find in grocery stores or better yet, do like I did. Go down to uh, Wallace and get a tour of the Duplin Winery. Do it. Yep. Uh, my baby, my buddy David will take you through and give you an entire tour down there. It's pretty, it's pretty mm -hmm. cool to do that. Uh, I'm getting a lot of social media comments. Good morning, sir. How are you? Is this one of our county commissioners? Who's that masked man behind there? Melvin McClaw. <laughs> How you doing, Melvin? 
Melvin McLawhorn, uh, one of our uh, Pitt County commissioners, has arrived here. Maybe we'll get him get a comment from him. Um, you know, good comment right here, um, talking about the fact. I mean, I just the, the idea that, that 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 Cooper is not allowing the families of these college football players to go to the games is just insane. And somebody made a great point here. So, so parents can watch little league games, but not college football games. That's insane. And look, even in Greenville. Installing stadium at Elm Street this year, they allowed one parent to come in. Yep. And I mean, and think about how that small that venue is compared to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. Oh, I know. This is nothing but politics, plain and simple. It's it's just ridiculous. It is. And to think that you know we can come in here this morning, in any restaurant, and you can be in a restaurant in a confined area like this, and that's legal, or you can go to a store, or you can, I mean. But outside at a football, I mean, there's got to be some political, vindictive reason why the governor's doing this. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I can't. I can't make it make sense. Just doesn't make any sense. And here's you, and here's the thing. As usual with Cooper, no explanation. No explanation other than Mandy Cohen yesterday saying that she doesn't think we should be playing college football. Yeah. So I have to assume that it's retaliation for the colleges doing something that Cooper and Cohen don't want them to do. Very well could be. It's, it, boy, it just makes my blood boil, I tell you. 734, 26 in front of 8 o'clock. More from Great Harvest Bread Company as we move through the morning. A lot of great guests coming up. Stay with us. We'll be back with more Friday morning Talk of the Town. Welcome to the weekend, and be careful if you're driving this morning. It is dangerous out there in low-lying areas. There's a lot of fog in some of the areas out in the country. So we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We are live at uh, Great Harvest Bread Company, and the, and the bears are coming in. So please bring us your teddy bears. We've already got several teddy bears here this morning, and we are collecting teddy bears. This is our annual teddy bear drive. We do it once a year, and we do it uh, for these uh, children. That uh, the, law, the law enforcement officers will take these bears. They will put them in their cars, <clears throat> and when they run up on a situation, domestic uh, situation where a child is in danger or has to be removed from a home or something like that, they like to have these bears with them so they can hand the child a teddy bear, and um, and and try to you know that always kind of defrays the situation at least a little bit and eases the pain. So, please bring us your teddy bears. We've got several that have already come in this morning. And we want to see it. And, of course, all this, uh, the teddy bear thing is about the uh, teddy bear bread that they're making here at uh, Great Harvest Bread. We're going to have the mayor and the sheriff and some other people coming in this morning and making these. These are going to be on sale the week of September 21st. And if you come in uh, in order this morning, you can come pick up your teddy bear on September. And I might even have been the person that needed the bread. I'll wash my hands first. But the mayor or the sheriff or somebody may have actually needed the bread, and uh, so that's coming up. All right, let me introduce some folks here. Again, we are um, highlighting a lot of the different charities that uh, Greg gets involved with here at Great Harvest every month. And uh, right now we're going to feature Bridge Foster Ministry. This is the group that gives backpacks to children with toiletries, clothes, and comfort items when they have to go to a foster home. And uh, here to talk about that is Jennifer Teague, who is with uh, Bridge Foster Ministries, my old friend. How you doing, Jennifer? Now, you chair of the board? I am, yes, yes. Board. And just do, just doer, general, all around, pack backpacks with my with our team, so good. it's good. Good to see you. And we also have Chandra Mewborn. We had Chandra, Chandra on last year. Yes, sir. Chandra is with DSS, and we'll talk about uh, the role of DSS in this. But first, uh, uh, tell us, uh, Jennifer, about uh, Bridge Foster Ministry and what you guys are doing in Pitt County. Well, uh, our family and people in the community, we really had a heart to help foster children in such a hard time. And we don't want foster children to have to leave their homes taking any belongings that they may have in a plastic trash bag. Sometimes children have to leave and um, because of court orders and um, so DSS goes to pick them up and we want the children to have a bag that is age appropriate with toiletries, clothing, comfort items to help make this transition just a little bit easier in a hard time and it helps the parents as well because they know the items coming in are going to be useful and beneficial for the for the children. 
Where do you get the funds to do the backpacks? Well, we have to raise money in the community. So part of the fundraiser, we're partnering with Great Harvest Bread. They've been so gracious to do that with us at DSS. you get some of the teddy bear money? We can get some of the teddy bear money. These Breddy Bears, the famous Breddy Bears, are $12 each, and DSS and Bridge Foster Ministry gets $4 from that. Um, a little plug, we also have a website where people can donate online, a mailing address. People can send in money, and we are a 501c3, so we can give you a tax receipt. So, But all of our funds go to DSS. Everything that we get goes back out to DSS and backpacks. All right, let's talk to a Sean. And we Rashad. have a backpack. Yep. Oh, good. So this is what the backpacks look like. That's Is that the logo right there? For That's the our Bridge logo Foster? for Bridge Foster Ministry. All right, great. Chandra Muburn is here. We had Chandra on last year. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Chandra is with the Department of Social Services, and um, I'd like to get you to kind of give us a little uh, input as to what this ministry and what these folks are doing is, is doing to help you and your job. Okay, good morning. As Ms. T said, the Bridge Ministry helps us when we put children into the foster care system. We are able to give them a bag with items if we take them two or three o'clock in the morning to make the transition for the child and the foster parent easier. Um, we're very thankful that they're partnered with us. Um, we started this venture and since we've started, we've given out um, I would say maybe between 25 and 30 bags thus far. Um, we're still stocking bags because there is a need. So we're just thankful that Ms. Teague and the Bridge Ministry wanted to partner with us and try to help these children transition through this rough time in their lives. So, so you, you, you probably see a lot of very difficult things. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. People, it's, it's kind of hard to hear. Yeah. When you're talking about kids, I mean, you know, we all have a soft heart for our children. Right. Uh, but uh, tell us, uh, t tell us how generally this takes place uh, when you have to deal with a child like this. Okay. So generally, um, the department will receive um, a report for abuse, neglect, or dependency. Um, if those things are founded, we have to remove children from their families. And, and that's um, where law enforcement comes in. Yes, they can and assist us with that. That's where these teddy bears come in, right? Yes, sir. Right. Um, to try to comfort the child, um, we. Um, are gracious that we have good foster parents in the Pitt County area who's able to provide temporary safety um, homes for the children until we can reunite the children back with their families. Currently we have about 208 children in the Pitt County foster care system and about 18 of those are in the 18 to 21 extended foster care system. What's your biggest need? Is it trying to find parents that, that will be foster uh, uh, parents to these kids? Yeah, we're always looking for foster and adoptive parents for the kids. That, that's a very great need. We always need foster and adoptive parents. What's it like parents. to be a foster parent? Uh, you, you get uh, Number one, you get paid. You don't do it for the pay. I know that. No, you don't. But, but, uh, <laughs> but you do get paid something. Uh, the, the, you do get some assistance when you right. take on a foster child. Right. But uh, what? how else does this, how does it work? It just um, helps you to be able to sow good seeds into children's lives, be able to help them be comforted, be able to teach them things, love on them, nurture them, just um, introduce them to parts of life that they may not have known prior to coming into the foster care system. How, how long are these kids generally with a foster parent? They could be with a foster parent from 24 hours to three or four years, what, just what, what depending. I mean, that's what I mean in terms of length of time of the stay. Yeah. So it, it's generally three or four years? It can be, yes, yeah. sir depending on how the parents are making and then, progress. And then what happens to the child after that? If the child is able to be adopted, we will ask the foster parent who has them if they would provide permanency for the child. And if they do, they can adopt that child and that child will have a forever family. Does that happen a lot? It does. We yeah. did about 30 plus adoptions last year in Pitt oh, County awesome. alone. That's great, that's great. So if people want to know more about the foster parent program mm -hmm. and may consider doing that, uh, what, how do they, who do they contact you? They can contact me, Chandra Muborn at 252-902-1244, or they can contact Tasha Willard at 252-902-1164. And this is Pitt County Department of Social Services. It is Pitt right. County Department of Social Services. All right, great. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for what you guys do. It's awesome. And uh, I love this Bridge Foster Ministry program. Again, if you are uh, just joining us, we're talking about the Bridge Foster Ministry, which gives backpack to uh, these kids with toiletries, clothes, comfort items when they have to go to a foster home. And they can't do it without money. And uh, so uh, the community uh, needs to step up and help. Now, the first thing you can do is bring us a teddy bear this morning. 
But then if you want to help financially, um, uh, the Bridge Foster Ministry could certainly use some donations as well. And a town bank here in Greenville is stepping up to help with a fundraiser. And uh, Jordan Bryant is here from Town Bank. Good morning, Jordan. Yes, sir, Henry. Thank you for having me. How are you? Doing great. Uh, What's Town Bank doing? So we're here partnering with uh, uh, Bridge Foster Ministry and Jennifer Teague. Um, You know, we sort of came to know each other. She shared her heart with me at the teller line and, uh, and, you know, just immediately had a connection and just wanted to get behind the mission that she had. Town Bank's doing a lot of great things in the community since they came to town. Yes, sir. As Jim Clement says, time to come to town. That's right. (laughs) You got to throw that in. (laughs) But I met your your great CEO. Uh, He and I have mutual friends up in the Tidewater area of Virginia. Yes, sir. He's a great man. Uh, Bob Bob Aston. Bob, yeah. And uh, he came to town, and, and you guys, you know, decided to make an impact on the community and you're giving back and you've only been here what a year year and a half something like that yes sir so uh we're going on you know this is our second year in town um you know we're, we're really looking forward to the growth and, and growing with partners like jennifer um you know we'll have everybody under one roof come come uh you know 2021 i believe um so it'll be great we'll have that jim clement feel in there uh with with partner with greg still and it'll be yeah. great yes sir all right so um so town bank is uh is doing a fundraiser Yep, and we're giving our members the opportunity to come in. We'll have a table set up um, with all the uh, needs that the that Jennifer's asking for with the backpacks and uh, the basic necessities. Um, and so we're, we're happy to be partnering with her in this. All right, Jordan Bryant with, um, with Town Bank. Thank you, man. Good Thanks, to see brother. you. Let me get Jennifer back in here to kind of close this segment out. Jennifer Teague, uh, who is um, the uh, chairman of the board for Bridge Foster Ministry. Uh, This is a great thing you're doing, Jennifer, Uh, and I know you. I know you don't have to do this, and so uh, God bless you for what you're doing for these children. Well, I appreciate it, and these are all of our children in Pitt County, and I will say we know that God wants these children to feel loved, and we love them. And so these children right here in our community, I see how hard DSS works for them. Um, Some sad situations can be turned into some positive things. So DSS is willing to work with them. And again, if I can give one more plug, because we can't do this without gracious donors in our community, um, because we know people want to support foster children. We know that they have a heart and love, and not everybody can foster, but you can give in some capacity. So we can, uh, our website is bridgefosterministry.org. And you can go check that out. And just, um, we're also on Facebook at Bridge Foster Ministry Pitt County. All right, great. Uh, Jennifer Teague, the chairman of the board of Bridge Foster Ministry. I'm glad we got to learn a little bit about that this morning. Also, thanks to Chandra again, Chandra Muburn from Pitt County DSS. Chandra, thanks for all you're doing. You guys are doing God's work, there's no doubt about it. And thanks to Jordan also from Town Bank. Yes. Good to have you all. We are live. We just had a famous actor walk in. We just had a famous <laughs> actor has now entered the building. <laughs> Also, another famous businessman, we got Russ Saputo from Budweiser who's here. They're doing some great things in the community. We're going to talk to Russ. Uh, we got to get a break in. We're live at Great Harvest Bread Company. Come on by. We're still collecting. Uh, we got some teddy bears already, but we need more. Bring us teddy bears this morning. These teddy bears are going to go to law enforcement, and um, the law enforcement guys will keep these in their cars when they need to use them to uh, comfort some kids. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Good much, to Henry. See you. All right, let's it. get a break in. We'll be back at Great Harvest right after this. All right, welcome back. We are live at Great Harvest Bread Cup. And TJ Sawyer from Sawyer's Fun Park just brought, is this, is this a matching bear to my bear? Is that Mitch's brother? What are you going to call this one? This one's Mitch. Mandy. <laughs> Mitch and Mandy. Mine's the male. TJ brought the female. Where do you get these names from? We got another teddy bear thanks to TJ Sawyer from uh, Sawyer's Fun Park, which, by the way, uh, one week from today, we're going to be live at Sawyer's Fun Park with a ribbon cutting. And uh, we're going to have free food for folks while we're out there. That's going to be a lot of fun one week from today. This morning, we are live at um, the uh, Great Harvest Bread Company, and we got a good crowd of folks in here. We're raising money for the uh, Bridges Foster Ministry. You can come in and order these breads. These are teddy bear breads. This is a display bread only, but if you order this, 12 bucks, it'll be ready the week of September 21st. And some of the celebrities, the, the sheriff has just arrived. Some of the celebrities are going to be actually kneading the bread here this morning, getting ready to make these, uh, these teddy bear bread uh, uh, pieces for you. Uh, 7.54, it is uh, six minutes in front of eight o'clock. And uh, McGee again, 
college football starts in North Carolina tomorrow, so uh, we do have Duke and um, Notre Dame. You know what time the games are? You know what time the games are tomorrow? No, I, I think the uh, – I know the North Carolina-Syracuse game is a noon game. I think – I don't know the Duke Yeah, time. it is a noon game because I remember Mac Brown saying he would love – because of COVID, he loves playing noon games, right? Yep. Yeah. This teddy bear is blocking the lights in your face, by the way. Oh, is it? Uh, how about Duke, uh, Notre Dame? That one's 2.30. 2.30. 2.30. Yeah. So we'll have the uh, pregame show on at 1.30 on, um, on 103.7 WTIB, the Duke game tomorrow, uh, the home of Duke football again this year, as we have been for many years, because, of course, we carry East Carolina on the big, big stick, 107.9, and our flagship station, 94.3, the game. And um, we will also have uh, the Carolina game on uh, – 94.1 in New Bern, Moorhead City, Jacksonville. And you can hear that game here in Greenville on 97.9. And you get Park. Panthers Raiders on Sunday. We do have Panthers. They, they, they had like, um, I think they allowed 20% of the stadium last night in Kansas City. There were 14,000 roughly fans uh, at yeah, Arrowhead. Right. Uh, I, and I, I didn't watch any of the pregame. I stayed away from all the pregame because I didn't want to get my blood pressure. I had it on, so I admit I watched but I, it. But I, but I tuned in right after kickoff. And, you know, it, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't feel like we got Dixie no. chicked. No. Like the NBA. They're I, not going all out no. crazy during the games Yeah, with more, all these social justice uh, things uh, on the field and stuff. Yeah, it's more in breaks, and that's more commentary at halftime and things. But during the game, no. There was some booing in the pregame, and I was listening to Clay Travis this morning, and he thought that they were booing because Houston stayed in the locker room during the national for both, anthem. For both anthems. They played yeah. two anthems. And then, they, and then they came out of the field, and he thought they were booing but when they were locking arms. and show, they, Which, you know, I don't think they were booing the locking of arms in the no. unity. Yeah. I think they were just booing the visiting team. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, live at uh, Great Harvest Bread Company this morning. Come on by. Bring us a teddy bear. we got a bunch of teddy bears. We need more. Bring us teddy bears. We'll be back at Great Harvest after the news break. Okay, welcome back to Great Harvest Bread Company. We're here, 8 o'clock hour. Busy morning on the show, as always. We love being out and about in the community. It is our annual teddy bear drive where we're collecting teddy bears, and these bears, uh, and they're coming in like crazy here this morning. We appreciate the community responding, as always. And uh, they're coming in, and what we do is we give these bears to law enforcement officers here in Pitt County, and they use them when they have to go into a domestic uh, situation where a child may have to be taken away out of a, uh, a bad situation in a home. Or they just may, uh, you know, they may be the victims of some sort of child abuse or something like that. So, uh, you know, you're doing God's work when you bring us a teddy bear this morning. We hope we'll get some more. we got great guests coming up. i got a buddy of mine I'm going to talk to in just a second. But before that, McGee, we, uh, we actually got a couple of really nice teddy bears from a couple of folks that just came in. Tell us who you got over there. You got a couple of nice kids. Yeah, we do. And they came all the way from Jacksonville. What? This morning. You drove up from Jacksonville? Great Harvest Bread Company. God bless you. Us. Tell us what your name is. Jacob. J-A-C-O-B. <laughs> J-A-C-O-B. Did you get that, Jacob? And your sister, what's your name? Leslie. Oh, look, she's been talking Le- like I know. Crazy. Leslie was talking my head off you a second ago. Put that in front of her. Now she yeah. walked off. She's gotten behind her mama. Well, I'm so glad you guys brought these teddy bears by. Can you tell us why you did that? Because some... When I did some Oh, that's awesome. That's so great, isn't it? That is awesome. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Leslie. You're not going to talk? You're not going to say anything? Say thank you. <laughs> She's scared to She's death of that microphone. She was talking in those Look, She really was talking like crazy during the news break, and now she won't say a word. Told me she was watching Scooby Doo on the way here. How foggy it was on the drive over. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to be careful. It's foggy out there this morning. <laughs> Jacob and I can hang out today. We could, we get along. All right, you great. and Jacob, yeah. We, we get along well, great. Thank you guys for the teddy for bears. You guys are that. awesome. Thank you for coming up. We are live at Great Harvest Bread. We're featuring some of the uh, the uh, the ministries that um, that Greg and Kim here do on a month to month basis. These guys are awesome. And this morning, uh, we're featuring Bridge Foster Ministry. We already had some of those folks on. 
Uh, we're going to have somebody here a little bit later on from the Pitt County Foster Child Program. And I want to say, where's my buddy? Oh, she just ran away. I was going to say, my buddy Tara Pish, who always, uh, Tara is like our uh, uh, executive producer whenever she's around. We do. We, we produce the uh, Embers uh, Christmas show every year. Last year we had seven, 800 people out at uh, the Christmas show. And Tara, of course, uh, from Reimage Church, and she's out here this morning. Look, she brought me water. She wants to know if I go. I mean, I need Tara she's all great. the time. No, she's great. Uh, let me introduce a, a good friend of mine. Russ Saputo is here with Carolina Eagle Distributing. These are the Budweiser folks. Uh, and uh, they are uh, new to some areas of eastern North Carolina, but they've been around a long time over in Rocky Mount, but they bought Jeffries out like last year, I believe. Yep. And uh, Russ Saputo, who you might, when, you, when I say that name, Russ Saputo, you may remember Russ Saputo because he played football, McGee, for Steve Logan back in the day. What years did you play football? 96-99. Uh, yeah. Yep. We were pretty good back in those days. Those yeah. are good old days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss it? I miss it every day. Do you really? Yeah, I miss the competitiveness. Yeah. No doubt. Absolutely. But, but you're so high energy, you find a way oh, to yeah. be competitive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carolina Eagle is doing something along with Budweiser. Oh, we have a teddy bear. Don't go away. I want you to come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, uh, we're happy that uh, Anheuser-Busch has started a, uh, a program to help volunteer fire departments across the country with clean drinking water. And you're going to be uh, out in the community tomorrow, Russ, uh, donating uh, drinking water from Anheuser-Busch. Tell us what you're doing tomorrow. Oh, uh, yeah. So we'll be at uh, the Jamesville Fire Department from uh, 10 to 12 o'clock. We'll be giving away 200 cases of uh, Anheuser-Busch drinking water. This is the same water that they actually use inside all of their, out their, their beverages. Um, and it's safe for drinking, cooking, whatever else they need. But... Um, Right now, so Anheuser-Busch has donated over 80 million cans of this water. Wow. And uh, it's a big number, pretty pretty big number. So uh, we're looking forward to, uh, you know, giving back to these guys. We're going to do some box lunches for them, too, as well, from Logan's Roadhouse. Uh, and, uh, you know, and be able to share that with them, too, as well. So this is tomorrow at uh, Jamesville Volunteer Fire Department. Correct. From and, 10 to 12. Yeah, and uh, the chief over there is uh, Michael Pierce. That's correct. Um, and, and, and who who gets the water? How, who decides who gets the Are people able, eligible to just come up and get it? Well, they're, 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 the fire department, it's, they can use that at their discretion. Okay, uh, we would so like they're going to make that decision. That is exactly correct. We, we, we want them to be able to use that for their use, when, whether they're – uh, out fighting a fire and they bring a couple cases with them to be either give it you know for themselves for consumption or for you know anybody that might be hurt in a fire so tomorrow 10 o'clock 10 to noon yes at Jamesville Fire Department you'll be out there we'll be out there too as well we'll have some giveaways for some people that show up and show their um, you know patriotism and help these guys out with anything that they can do so uh, we'll be looking forward to it all right, so uh, thanks to uh, Carolina Eagle Distributing and Anheuser-Busch. Does, does, uh, does Anheuser-Busch normally do drinking water, or is this just the water that's used in the products? No, this, this is something where they shut all the, can li the, uh, the lines down. Uh, instead of doing beer, they put the water in the cans. This is for natural disasters. It's for hurricanes. It's for fires, all those other types. They've been doing it since 88. So you don't sell it? No, we don't sell it. It's it, We give it away. And, and our number one uh, area that where we give that away is at the Red Cross. We yeah. actually, you know, all the hurricanes that we've had, we've put their logos on the cans. And uh, and they come with tractor-trailer loads empty. We fill them up. And it's, it's really, really nice to be able to give those people back something. And they disperse it. So it, it's pretty nice. All right. So uh, thanks to Carolina Eagle Distributing. Thanks to Anheuser-Busch. For giving back and uh, good clean drinking water uh, coming to Eastern North Carolina over in Jamesville tomorrow. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Thanks for all Appreciate you guys you having do. me on. Yeah. We're, we're excited to have uh, have you guys in Greenville now. Yep. We loved working with Jeffries all those years, but uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. And uh, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Good to have you in the Greenville yep. community. Thank you, man. Good deal. Russ Saputo with Carolina Eagle Distributing. All right. You can, uh, you can take okay. off if you want. I'm going to get Tony in here. We got a new teddy bear coming in. Thank you, Russ. Let's get... Uh, my man Tony McQueen from uh, the uh, Big County Big Elections T. Board has shown up. Tony is him. Tony is one of the guys that's been mailing out the ballots. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> like eight thousand of them. Yeah, so. and uh, what'd you bring us? Let's see what you got. 
I don't have any bears. I have rabbits. Oh, that's good. You know what? Bears were hard to find last <laughs> night. Yeah. We'll take the rabbits. I found that out, too. This is great. So, uh, yeah. Appreciate that. And you brought a bunch of them. I bought three of them, and yeah. T- typical all of I, rabbits. All... They multiplied right in your back. <laughs> <laughs> I bought all I could find. When, when, it, when, so. he, when he bought this, it was just one. It turned out to be. <laughs> uh, just, it tends to happen that way. <laughs> all right, great. Well, uh, how you doing? Tired. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm all right, though. So the so the mail the mail outs have begun. They have. How many mail outs we got in Pitt County? Over eight thousand. Really? So people and are really I mean, going to that, vote. That's just civilian. The, that's people that have requested them. Yeah. Um, online, overseas, probably another thousand. So, but we got a lot back yesterday, which is, to me, was encouraging because you know we were worried that we were going to make a ballot for somebody to mail in. And then make a ballot for somebody to vote early because they don't want to mail it in. So I'm hoping that when people get these absentee ballots, that they will they will mail them back in. That's that's yeah. our biggest concern because that that can get very expensive. So T- tell me this, uh, you know, I, I'm not quite up to speed. I mean, you're every, you're hearing so much political rhetoric about the mail-in ballots on both sides, but when. Will the mail-in ballots be counted on election night? Will all those be counted, or it, actually, no? Wh- you know, we're happens, hearing that it could be days before no, 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 it's no, no, all no. counted. Not what true? happens is, is that we have um, absentee meetings every week up until the election day. So every week, um, our board will approve or not approve the um, ballots that are mailed in, and then. Once they're approved, we open them up right there in the meeting and put them in the machine and count them right then. So, and then on, we just compile them over, the t- over time. But and, they can't be counted until election night, right? Well, they're counted, but we don't release the results until election so night. So they will be counted in advance. Oh, yeah. So that's how we're going to know on election night who won? Well, we'll know what the results are for absentees. We don't know who won. But um, at 5 o'clock on Election Day, we'll have um, a board meeting. We'll close the polls on the absentee machines and all the uh, one-stop machines. And then um, we'll upload those those results to the state board website. But they won't release them until 730. The question is, will we know on election night who won elections? Oh, yeah, you should. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, you're hearing a lot of political rhetoric that it could be days yeah. or weeks. We've been slaughtered with phone calls about this stuff. But, I mean, each state is different. Each state stands on its own. Yeah. But North Carolina, we've, we've, we've got our stuff in a pile. I mean, I, it, me and Dave have been doing this together for 17 years. I mean, yeah, Dave so, Davis, who's the, uh, the head of the office. And yeah. Dave, you're the so, I mean, you know, we're not... You know, it's not like we're we're newbies to this. So I mean, right. but I mean, uh, every just, every county is not as good as you are. Yeah. Let me let me just throw out. Uh, oh, I don't know, a uh, Durham County. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got. I mean, to quote to quote the my, my buddy Brad Crone, the elections uh, department in Durham County has been a dumpster fire for 25 years. <laughs> well, when Mike died, Mike Ashy, who was the director there, he was a big big time jogger runner. He had a heart attack when he was running. That place was running like a, I mean, perfectly. So it wasn't always this way, huh? No, no. And um, and so we, what we try to do is that we look for Pitt County. Yeah. I mean, you know, what other counties do, that's up to them. But around here, most of the directors and the staff have been together for a while. So, I mean... It, but I, th- you know, on election night, yes, you will know <laughs> in North Carolina who won. Okay. Is there postage postage required for absentee ballots to be mailed? Yeah, back in? We, we, we'll send it to you. You know, with with postage. Okay. You just have to put a forever stamp on it to send it back. So if if quick, if someone for some reason uh, there's a return to sender and there are 200 you know ballots that come back. And they're not in on time. What happens in? Do you have to wait for those to come yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have to be in by five o'clock on election day. Okay. So, um, yeah, if we don't really, 
have a lot of late ones. Really? Um, yeah. No, we. The only ones that we, it's, as long as they're postmarked by election day, they're fine. Gotcha. The only time that um, we'll have a lag is when they're coming from overseas. Well, you guys are going to be in the spotlight. November oh, really? 3rd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew that. So hey, do it right. <laughs> <laughs> we always do it right, bro. <laughs> They do. You do. All right, man. Thank you much. Good to All see right, you. Man. Thank you for the see teddy you. bears. See you, Tony. Good to see, see you. Man. You made a difference in a couple of children's lives, maybe three this morning, children's lives. All right, uh, 18 uh, after, we're live at Great Harvest Bread Company. Let's, let's catch up on a break. I see uh, the great Scott Shook has arrived. Maybe we can get Shook on. Looks and we got some other folks. Uh, Tara, I mentioned you as my executive producer. Tara Pish is back. She's, oops, and I just dropped water on my computer. Uh, my girl Tara, who uh, takes good care of us, and we work together every year with the Embers Christmas Show. We're hoping to have an Embers Christmas Show this year, hoping. But if, if the parents can't even go to the to the college football games, I'm not optimistic. Things could change. Yeah. A lot of time between yeah, now and then. Right, like November 3rd. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We're coming back. More Talk of the Town coming up live here at Great Harvest Bread Company. Come by. Bring us a uh, bear. Come by and make a donation to the Bridges Forest Ministry. You can bring cash, check, money order, Venmo. They'll take it all. Come on back and join us. We'll be back at Great Harvest right after this. Okay, welcome back. We are live this morning at Great Harvest Bread Company. Uh, and, of, of course, it is our annual teddy bear drive. we got teddy bears everywhere. Should we put the mask on the teddy bear? No. Nah. Will that work? No. Nah. I have to do that during the break. Yeah. I can't do it right now. Don't do that to Mitch. <laughs> uh, you know what's really interesting? Uh, someone just texted me. Now that we're on Facebook, during the commercial breaks, they bring the uh, audio down. Thank goodness. So you can see what's going on here in, <laughs> when we're doing remotes now during the commercial breaks. So they, you know, they see us running around and talking to people. And I they, hope the and Giving people down. direction and stuff. So it's kind of interesting. All right, let's... <laughs> We got the sheriff of Pitt County coming up, um, and uh, we have the mayor of Greenville coming on this hour. We have more guests coming by. Let's get a news break in right now. Our news update brought to you by the Tire Realty Group here in Pitt County. Here's McGee. All right, thanks, and we in tribute to Patriot Day today. Governor Roy Cooper has ordered all U.S. and North Carolina flags at state facilities to be lowered to half staff from sunrise to sunset today. Today honors the victims of the 9-11 tragedy, tragedy, their families, and the heroic first responders uh, and their sacrifices. For the second time in weeks, bar owners across North Carolina rallied Thursday and protested outside the governor's mansion, demanding that they be allowed to open. Zach Medford, organizer and president of North Carolina Bar and Tap Association, says 1,063 private bars are still closed in the state. North Carolina Secretary of Health and Human Services, Dr. Mandy Cohen, has denied a request for colleges across North Carolina to allow families of football players to attend games in person. The request was made on Tuesday in a letter to DHHS by Appalachian State, UNC Charlotte, ECU, Carolina, and Wake Forest. A Fort Bragg paratrooper was killed in a training accident in Georgia, according to the 82nd Airborne Division. Officials say the paratrooper was assigned to Fort Bragg, but was at Fort Stewart in Georgia for training at the time of the accident. No further details have been released. Police in Kinston are hoping to identify a man wanted for questioning in a case of peeping at a Walmart. A surveillance photo of the person of interest was released Thursday afternoon. Police say the electronic peeping happened last Thursday afternoon around 1240 at the Walmart on US 70. Captain Rodney Russell says it appears the peeper was trying to take photos up the skirts of women shoppers. And wildfires burning across the West have now killed 23 people and scorched 7,000 square miles. More than 100 large wildfires were reported in 13 western states Thursday. The fires have killed 19 people in California, three in Oregon, and one in Washington. Dozens more are missing in a series of wildfires in Northern California. With their talk of the town, news update, I'm Trent McGee. Henry? Okay, very good. Uh, we are going to talk to some more friends here, but let me tell you, first of all, that our, uh, that our news update brought to you by the Tire Realty Group and property management team uh, here in Pitt County. And, of course, uh, uh, they are continuing to get it done. You hear us talk every week about the uh, number one real estate team here in Greenville, Pitt County, and it is the Tire Realty Group. Homer and Rachel and their team of agents continue to getting it done. They're selling at least an average of one home every 24 hours. That's unbelievable. So if you, want to, if you want to list it with somebody who's going to sell it, get it with Tire Realty. List it, sell it, move on. 
Give the Tire Realty team a call today. They're the guys I would call if I was going to sell my home. Give them a buzz at uh, 252-758-HOME. That's 758-4663. Or you can visit them at tirerealtygroup.com and start packing. All right, we are at Great Harvest Bread Company this morning. We're having a lot of fun. we got more teddy bears coming in. We'll uh, talk to some of our teddy bear donors in a minute. Uh, and we'll find out, we'll talk to the sheriff about uh, what they do with these teddy bears as well. But uh, let me bring Greg Green back in. Greg is the owner of Great Harvest Bread Company. We've had a great response with teddy bears this morning. Yep. This is a lot of fun, but you're going to have some people back there actually making teddy bear bread here shortly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's part of it is the teddy bears uh, we, we give to the sheriff's department and others so that they can provide some comfort for kids when they are in a traumatic situation and removed from a home. Um, but, you know, funds for DSS and for Bridge Foster Care, that's raised through the actual bread bears that we're going to be making. And so we're going to ha have Miss Paula in the back. She's going to make a bear. Um, mayor should be swinging by to make a bear. Uh, I'm going to yank you in the back, make you make a bear. Uh, so uh, we're just going to have a little bit of fun on the kneading table today. And I was that say, if you put me in the kitchen, it could be dangerous. All I can do is cook eggs. <laughs> now, let's talk to the high sheriff, Paula Dance, the sheriff of Pitt County, is here. Good morning, sheriff. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. You ready to make some bears? I am ready to make some you bears. You did this last year. I did. I, I didn't get <laughs> I was, that talent was, from my mom. How do you rate but... the mayor's ability to make the, the bears? Well, th this will be the first time the mayor's been out to make <laughs> one. I mean the sheriff. Yeah. I said yeah. the mayor. Oh, the sheriff. Yeah. Sheriff. Yeah. Oh, she can do it. Oh, I made she a great bear. It. Made a great bear. She's a pro by now. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> getting there. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've, we're getting teddy bears. People bringing them in right now, as a matter of fact. We've had a bunch of these teddy bears show up. Uh, Paula, tell us, uh, tell us how important this is and what you guys use these bears for in law enforcement. Oh, yes, this is very important. Um, you know, our job uh, entails a lot of different things, um, and some of those things involve children and tragedies, um, you know, various tragedies. But we, we have the ability now to make that connection with these bears to the children to show that, you know, as law enforcement officers, although we are there to do a job, we're human, we love them, we want to take care of them, and we want to be able to give them something that, you know, they can maybe tell their secrets to, um, maybe hold on to, and just to have something to take their mind off from whatever that tragedy is at the moment. You know, I've been so worried about um, kids during this COVID situation and I know you guys are probably seeing a lot of bad stuff right now people are staying home this is probably a, we hear there's an uptick in suicide there's an uptick in de domestic abuse alcoholism drug abuse and child abuse is that is that is that accurate yes that would be accurate we've yeah. um, we've had those upticks it's uh, been very unfortunate um, unfortunately COVID has affected us all uh, you know around the world and and our community was not immune to it um, so certainly there, there are those upticks. Um, it's just a, a very sad situation, but I, I know that we are strong and we're gonna get through this. And um, you, know, our, you know, I say to our kids, hold on, hold on. We're gonna get there, we're gonna get back to some normalcy uh, eventually. But yes, there has been those upticks. It's just been very unfortunate. Well, thank you for what you do. And uh, I hope these bears will help ease the pain a little bit. I mean, it's just awful to think about a child that's getting abused in any way. But um, I know when you sometimes you have to actually take them from the home, mm -hmm. take them to foster care and those kind of things. And so uh, yeah, the yeah, folks we, who've delivered these bears this morning have, uh, you know, at least tried to make a change, uh, make a difference in somebody's life. We work hand in hand with um, the Department of Social Services, um, specifically as it relates to uh, child protective services and um, so um, I've had connections with the Department of Social Services for many years. Um, as an investigator, I, uh, that was an area of expertise for me, was doing physical and sexual child abuse. So I certainly have more of an insight on um, that relationship with DSS. We support them, they support us, and uh, these bears really come in handy. Our officers put them in the trunks of their cars, and it's a ve very valuable tool um, when they are trying to um, get these kids um you know to relax and back to some type of normalcy 
Well, thanks to everyone who's brought a bear in this morning. Absolutely. We still hope to get some more. We got more coming in. Uh, Pirate Al just brought us a bear, so we'll talk to him in a second. But back to Greg Green here. Greg, thanks for what you're doing here this morning. Absolutely. As usual, you're using your business uh, not only to to uh, uh, provide uh, great food for people, but uh, you're also doing good for the community like you always do, my friend. Yeah. Well, the community is only as good as its residents, you know, and we all have to dig in and do what we can uh, to make this the great place that it is. And we've discovered that we live in a great community. We have lots of people here who, who love and care, and part of our role here at Great Harvest is to be a bridge, to uh, show people how we can serve, and to encourage them to step up in service, but also to encourage those who do serve. You know, what, what DSS does, what our police officers do, what our sheriff's department personnel do, they deal in heartache every day. And uh, this, this event is as much about encouraging them, letting them know that a community surrounds them and cares about them uh, in, the, in the troubling times that we live in and what they face every day. So uh, we're and honored know, to do it. And Paula, you, I don't know if you know this guy's story. Every time I'm here, I learn something new that makes me love this guy more. But you tell it again? What part? <laughs> About your childhood. I mean, have you ever heard this story? I believe I have. I, I, but I hadn't I, heard I'd it. I'd love until, to hear it again. I hadn't he heard it until uh, what, you know why. Yeah. I mean, this guy's got a soft spot in his heart for everyone, but uh, this uh, yeah. foster care program is really near and dear to his heart based on what happened well, to you as yeah. a child, right? I, I I was left on a doorstep when I was five, oh. and so I, I I've lived in foster care for a period of time, and uh, it had a tremendous impact on my life. Um, but you know, also as a person of faith and as a pastor, we're called to care for the widow and the orphan, you know, and this is the most tangible way in which we can do that. Uh, and so it's personal for me. Uh, it's also a faith thing for me. Um, that and you think about just long-term impact. I mean, we yeah. can invest in these kids now, or we can invest in them later. And uh, studies show that investing in them now makes a huge difference. Well, God bless you, brother. So. Um, and during the month of September, these bears, and we got them down here that uh, Paula and others are going to be making this morning. The bears are 12. I, I don't want to break it. Did I just break that bear? I believe this is your, you No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, these bears are $12. Yep. Yep. You order them now, and they're going to be available the week of September 21st, right? Yep, so we will have social workers, we will have police officers, we will have sheriff's department personnel, we will have folks from various uh, nonprofit organizations all working on the kneading table all the week of the 21st. They will be making the bears out of love. Um, uh, so when you buy a bear, you'll be buying something that's made by folks that are working in the foster care industry that are on the front lines. It's our chance to kind of get them in, encourage them, love on them a little bit, as well as do something good. That's awesome. Last year we sold 156 bears, and our goal is to do significantly more than that this year. So Let's set the goal at 200. 200 bears. Let's do right, it. Let's sell 200 bears. I'm going to talk about it on the air every morning until we right. sell 200. Uh, and thanks to Paula, the uh, sheriff, for being here. Paula, Dan And by the way, Paula, what happened to Lee? What, what is it like to work with a famous movie star? Oh, I tell you. The it is, it, yeah, he's, he's, uh, been a great a, he's been a great asset, uh, bringing <laughs> those skills to uh, writing when he does our write-ups on our yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So he, he's a big asset. Lee right. Darnell, who's your public information Absolutely. officer and other things. Absolutely. Community outreach guy Absolutely. at the Sheriff's Department. And uh, he doesn't even know we're talking about him. No, right he now. doesn't. Uh, he and Clark Willis were comparing how many movies they've been in. Oh, wow. And Clark was bragging about the fact that he's in the new Halloween movie. But uh, Lee said, well, I've been in 30. Oh, my goodness. And Clark, how many have you been in? Three? <laughs> <laughs> but he was a regular on what was the TV show you were on? Sleepy oh, Hollow. Wow. Yeah. They shot it down in New Bern and Wilmington. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Doug. Good to Thank see you, you. Sarah. Good to see you. Hey, Paula, let's go make some bears. Absolutely. Right, Paula's heading back to the kneading table. She's yes. going to go back and make some teddy bears. Yeah. All right, we got to get a break in. More coming up. Stay with us. We're live at Great Harvest Bread Company. Come on by. We'll be here till 9 o'clock. We're collecting bears. We're collecting money for the uh, Bridge Foster Ministry. If you just want to bring cash, they'll take it. And here's another bear coming in as we speak. So All we'll right. be right back. Okay, welcome back. We are live at Great Harvest Bread Company. We got bears coming in like crazy. Uh, and we appreciate that. We got folks to talk to here again. We're collecting bears for the foster program. Uh, these bears go to law enforcement officers who use them when they have to take children out of bad situations in homes or maybe take them to foster care. I got the great Pirate Al. What's up, Pirate Al? Hey, Henry. Al Glad Powell. What would you bring us, man? 
Well, actually, the, uh, the place I went to was all out of bears, but I got a nice stuffed. It looks like dog. a bear. Yeah, it look, I, th I thought it was I when, think, I, when I, I checked out. I said, what do you think of this bear? She says, was it really a dog? But, hey. <laughs> I hear there's a coin shortage. I didn't know there was a teddy bear shortage. But, I mean, <laughs> I had a hard time finding one last night, too. Uh, thank you for doing that, man. Does sure. it talk? Does it does. Care? Oh, it absolutely does. I can't hear it, but it says yes, something. Yes, it, it sure does. No matter what, what, which uh, leg that you, that you push, it does. All right. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Too. you. Thank you. And also, I've got the A-mans here. I got Natalie and Michael. Yes, sir. Uh, and these guys uh, brought a teddy bear as well. Natalie, how you doing? I'm doing good. This Natalie is good. teaches in the Department of Engineering at ECU. I'm in the Industrial Distribution and Logistics Program. Okay, good. Yeah. And Michael, what do you do? I'm uh, fortunate to, to work with the uh, Department of Transportation, DOT. All right, good. Well, it's good to see you all. Now, you, uh, you guys brought a bear for the kids, but Michael, you had an interesting experience as a child. Yes. That made you want to bring out a teddy bear this morning. What was that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so as a child, I had a, uh, uh, a medical emergency, and um, I was with my grandparents, and I uh, had a seizure. And um, I remember uh, waking up in the uh, EMS truck, and um, I'll never forget it. I told my wife it gave me chills thinking about it. That uh, you know they gave me a teddy bear, and I was probably I was in the second grade, so you know I don't know six or something like that. Isn't that so, interesting? And you remember it now. I'll, I'll never forget it. So yeah. when I heard this on the radio, I told her, I said, well, you know, I had experience like that where I remember them giving me a teddy bear, and um, I, I'll never forget it. So I said, let's we got to do that today. we got to bring one out. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, well, God bless you guys. Thank you. Natalie, are you having to pull the microphone back over to you there? Yes. Are you having to teach online right now? Yes. yes. Are you having fun with that? I am, actually. We're doing uh, WebExes. Yeah. Web Well, good, good. Well, thank you guys for coming out and bringing a bear. It's great to meet you. Meet you, uh, Natalie and Michael. Amen. Good to see you. All right, let me see. I got, uh, I got Will. Come on, Will Bissett is here. I want to get these guys on for a second. Where's Whitney? There she is. She's coming. I got uh, Whitney Sauter and Will Bissett from Wimbledon Tennis and Recreation Center. Good morning. How are you? Get a little closer, Whitney. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you? Uh, we wanted to get an update as we're now moving into the fall season. Has the, has the pool closed at Wimbledon? Uh, no, sir. It closes the 30th of September. So the pool is still open, but yes. you guys are still selling memberships. But now as we uh, move into the uh, fall season, tell us what's going on. Because, again, for folks who don't know about the Wimbledon Tennis Center. Oh, thank you. There's another bear coming in. Thank you very much. Who is that under there? Oh, it's Linda. Hey, Linda. God, you, she's sure. all covered up with sunglasses and that. So, uh, Wimbledon Tennis and Recreation Center, what a great asset for our community. Yes, thank and, you. And uh, tell us about the fall activities you got planned. So, it, uh, we've actually just started, you know, making some pickleball courts on our indoor indoors. So, we've got two pickleball courts ready to go, and we're hoping to get that rolling here very soon. Um, yep, and... Let's see, we've got some socials coming up. We do uh, an Oktoberfest every year. This will be our second annual Oktoberfest. So some fun events and things for our members out there at the club. A lot of great things always happen at Wimbledon Tennis and Recreation yeah. Center. Let me talk to Will Bissett, who's the tennis pro, former ECU tennis player, who came from where? London, England. I love his accent. Uh, you got the only indoor tennis courts in town. Tell us, uh, tell it for tennis players looking for a place to play now that sure. the weather's going to get cool. Tell us about what you got there. Yeah, definitely. No, it's, it's great to have access to those courts. I'm pretty sure it's the, the first, like the only indoor courts within about an hour and a half of it. Um, so for the kids and the adults to be able to play during the winter when it gets cold, it's, it's really great for them. Um, and it's just awesome that we can carry on through the winter months. Um, and we made the most of it in the summer, even with the showers and stuff, so we could still play, which was uh, really, really great. So you got indoor and outdoor courts? Indoor and outdoor, yes. Right. And uh, you offer lessons? Yes. So we right now it's $50 for non-members, 40 for members. Um, and I coach variety. I coach a lot of adults, lots of juniors as well. And I've got more ECU actually tennis players helping me out as awesome. well, which is great. Awesome. All right, Whitney, give us membership information. If somebody wants to join Wimbledon, how do they do it? Sure, so you visit us at WimbledonAthletics.com, and up in the top right corner, it'll say Join Now, Become a Member. You can then check out our different membership options. We do individual memberships for $60 a month, family memberships for 75 
and that includes you know indoor outdoor tennis in the pool right now and then also our fitness center so it's a good deal. You guys deal. had a great year at your pool. I, know I, got, I, went, I was out there several times picking up my grandson from uh, Next Level because they're in the building there with you also and uh, it looked like the pool was packed. You guys have a great pool out there. Yeah. All right uh, anything else you guys want to mention? No, just that we have our Oktoberfest coming up and the socials are great. Um, we're actually going to have like uh, members versus the pros, which will be fun. So, um, no, we, we've done, done a great job. All right, great. Uh, Whitney, thank you for coming by. Appreciate you guys being a sponsor of the show. Always great to see you. Uh, uh, love your dad, Bruce, who's been a friend of mine for many years. He, he, we're having lunch next week, so <laughs> looking forward to it. Good to see you. Whitney Sauter, Will Bissett from Wimbledon Tennis and Recreation Center. Okay, let's get a break in. We got the mayor of Greenville here. We're going to talk to the mayor about he's going to be needing bread to make some of the teddy bears. Still have time to bring us a teddy bear or a check. We got a check coming in. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, to the Greenville uh, from Benny. Oh, great! It's from Benny Hardy at Page and Smith. A, a donation for the teddy bear program. Shall we look at it? It's 100 bucks. Very nice, Benny. Thank you so much. And this will go to the teddy bear program as well. We're still collecting teddy bears. Come on out and see us. More Talk of the Town live at Great Harvest Bread Company coming up. I'm surrounded by bears. We'll be right back. He has to do the pirate report too. All right, we're back. Welcome back. We're live at uh, Great Harvest Bread. We got, we've had a packed show this morning, and we're packed with uh, teddy bears, and we're making teddy bears in the back in the kitchen. And they're supposed to look like this. Now, the question is, will Mayor P.J. Connolly's bear look like this? Because P.J. has joined us here. Good morning, Mayor Connolly. Good morning. How are you doing, Henry? Are you going to be back there making the bears? In fact, we got him out of the kitchen. He's got his apron on. It's purple. I, know, I like that. Yeah. But I, I, you've got to change your attitude because you sat down here and said, my bear is going to look terrible. Hey, like I said, you've got to set the expectation. <laughs> Now, that doesn't sound like you. You're never a low expectations no, guy. No, no. Uh, so you're here uh, volunteering your time helping to make the teddy bear bread this morning. We've obviously done really well collecting teddy bears. We're inundated with them. Absolutely. Uh, this is a great program that Greg does here for uh, the foster kids and, and everyone involved. Absolutely. Greg is an uh, integral part of our community. It's really good to be able to see all the, all the charity work that he does. I know this has been a really tough year for him, and, you know, to, to listen to his mission, he sent me an email the other day telling me exactly what he wants to do for the rest of the year. And I think it's incredible. I mean, we've got so many needs in our community, and for a business leader like Greg to step up, it's awesome. And, you know, every time I'm here, I learn something new about him. He told the story this morning about him being in foster care. I don't know if you know the story. I mean, it, it just shook me to my core. He said he was left on a doorstep at age five. I, I just I never heard, heard that before. I just heard that a few minutes ago. I was listening to the, the show, and I was just blown away. I couldn't imagine the feeling of that. Oh, yeah. So, obviously, this is near and dear to his heart. Uh, we don't have much time, but quick question about last night's city council meeting. Uh, the uh, community, it, it, was, it was kind of a great example of, uh, of, of people working together to solve some problems. Uh, the JP2 athletic fields at the, at the Catholic High School been controversial since they've been built. Rich Ballot, uh, generosity, unbelievable, but neighbors concerned about the noise and the sound. But, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it sounds like they actually got together on their own with some of the city staff and worked this out without you guys having to have a vote last night. Yeah, I mean, it was it was really great to see. I mean, Rich uh, has done an outstanding job. I mean, for a year, he's been meeting with the neighbors. I mean, a, a full year to yeah. come up with a plan. I mean, that's incredible for him to be able to do that. And to be able to see them work it out prior to us having to vote on it, I mean, that was that was neat. I mean, we had our, we had our uh, people come speak in, in favor of it and then those in opposition, and it was kind of neat. because I watched the whole thing. All the people in opposition said, I'm with Ron. Position, yeah, you know, which was really. When have cool. you ever seen that? No, no. I mean, and you know, I got. I just got to say this too. There, there were people in the community that were trying to stir this controversy up. Uh, you know, and and it's the same old rhetoric. Calvin Mercer was leading the charge, and and trying to get people to oppose this, and write letters to the editor and make nasty comments on social media saying you were in the pocket of developers once again that you know this was all about special interest i you know th that to me 
is over the top. It's like everything from the left right now, people play overplaying their hands. You guys are trying to work through a situation to do something for children in this community, for crying out loud. What's that got to do with special interest? Well, there's problem solvers and there's problem makers, and we'll, con we'll continue to be problem solvers. You yeah. know, it, it doesn't do us any good for us to, to really beef up the rhetoric when, you know, there's, it, it's as simple as sitting down at the table having a discussion, and Rich Ballot showed that by, a, by sitting down and having discussions. He didn't have to sit down with those neighbors. I mean, he could right. have moved forward with that text amendment the way it was and said, you know what, I don't, I don't really care what the neighbors say. Yeah. And he decided that he was going to go ahead and meet, and we had a good outcome at the end. So we're really excited. All right, I know you got to go make bears. I'm going to let you go. All right, Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you, Henry. Mayor P.J. Colley of Green. Where's McGee? McGee's, we didn't do the pirate report. He left without doing the pirate report. What's he got, a tea time or something this morning? You can go back. <laughs> right. It's good. All right. Uh, are we are we out of guests? I can't believe we're out of guests. Let's go back in. All right. I'll wash my hands. All right. Come on back. Are we out of guests at this point? Have we, we inter have we interviewed everyone? I guess have you, you got Miss Elliot. Oh, come Bring on, Miss Elliot. In. Yeah, come on. She's been waiting patiently. I, I'm room maker. She's I'm just waiting. <laughs> tell, tell me who you are. My name is Jan Elliott. I'm the director of social services. Okay, good, good. Okay. I, I, they told me you were coming, and I wasn't yeah, sure. I, I just finished making bread, so. Oh, good. So you were in the kitchen. That's why <laughs> I we was in the find kitchen. You. Uh, we've right. had a great response to the yeah, Teddy it's Bear been wonderful. Drive. Uh, we even got a check for you here that was sent over from Page oh. and Smith Accounting. Oh, fantastic! And and, um, and of course, a lot going on with the DSS program. And, and this uh, Bridge Foster Ministry that right. we've been talking about. Yeah, they've been morning. wonderful, just wonderful. Uh, and you guys do God's work over there with these kids that get in bad situations uh, by no fault of their own right? and have to be placed in foster care. So thank you for what you do. Thank you so much, yes. It's a, it's a job that, that you have to love every day because you're making a difference. You guys see a lot of bad stuff, don't you? We do, we yeah. do, we do. Yeah. So. Uh, I know you want to join me in thanking all the people that brought Teddy Bears. And uh, they wanted me to mention also, you've got uh, you got a big event coming up for uh, holidays. We do, yes. Uh, every, holiday cheer. Right. Every Christmas, uh, we try to sponsor, have every child sponsored that's in foster care uh, so that they have a wonderful Christmas in care uh, so that they're not forgotten by Santa Claus. And so it, it's, a, it's a busy time and it's a joyous time because uh, the community steps up and helps us do that. All right, so people can send their donations to the Department of Social Services on 5th Street, or you can uh, you can call, which I got the number right here, Chandra Muber. We had right, Chandra. 252-902-1244. Right. I'm sure they can just Google Pitt County Social Services. Oh, they sure can. We're we're there. The numbers out there. So we uh, we would love to have folks, maybe folks who've never done this before, to pitch in and do that because it is so wonderful to to shop for children. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having us. Back, make some more bears. That's right. We'll do that. Thank you. First. All right, we are done. Thanks to Greg. Thanks to Tara, my executive producer. Thanks to everybody who came and brought bears this morning, brought cash. Another great uh, teddy bear drive. We do it every year here, this time of year at Great Harvest. Especially thanks to, uh, to Greg and Kim Green here at Great Harvest Bread Company. Please come by, support what these guys do, and eat lunch or our breakfast here often, like I do. Don't forget, Monday we have Donald Trump Jr. This time it's really going to happen. He had to cancel yesterday, but we are sure it's going to happen on Monday morning. So I'll be there on Monday morning. Have a great weekend, everybody.